All right, so Thanksgiving is over. We're back. I hope you had a good break. Look at this table. I've been doing some organizing. This table is full of products that I am going to be making videos about, and I feel a little bit behind. But before we get to all of these things in upcoming videos, I wanted to just do a fall recap because I've done a lot of traveling. I went to Africa, went to a couple conferences, and I want to share some meaningful insights I had on the trip and some helpful tips as worship leaders as we do this thing that we do called leading worship. Um, yeah, watch the video and then watch every video I ever make. That would be great. Like and subscribe. Let's do this. Now, today's video is heard through the Hollyland Lark Max wireless microphone system. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit because I actually ran into them at the SALT conference. But you're hearing all this, this video is sponsored by them in that they sent me this and I said I'd make a video if it worked well and it works great, so I'm making a video. It's not sponsored, they didn't pay me, but they did allow me to keep this. So thank you, Hollyland. So I'm supposed to lead a team to Mozambique next year, so I hopped on a plane with Tommy so he could show me the ropes. It was really surreal seeing Africa for the first time. <laughs> as soon as we got there, I had to wake up really early, which was really easy because of this light shining in my eye. We went to the store to get a cooler, customer service, fantastic. And we did a two day seminar where I got to teach ministry leaders about worship ministry. And then what was really cool is we went to a college campus and spoke the gospel to like a bunch of students, had a great time clarifying the gospel for some of them, telling them the gospel for the first time for some of them. It was a great day. And then we got to do something really special. We drove out to the beach, which Maputo is where I was at the capital city. And we got to witness one of the baptisms of one of the students who has been teaching. He was actually baptized previously, but he realized he wasn't a Christian when he first got baptized. So he wanted to do it again. And it was a great experience. Then we went back to the house, played some basketball, and let's just say, Soccer is more their sport. <laughs> and then another day we drove like an hour and a half away from the city into more rural areas as we joined another ministry. They were teaching some youth about purity and how to get ready for marriage. And I have several thoughts from that day. One of the things I picked up on is that even though these kids may not have had a lot, there was still a lot of joy. What I noticed is that there were no kids like hanging off to the side saying they weren't gonna be involved or it was not the, the cool kids. They were just all out there having fun. So one of my biggest takeaways from that day and probably the whole trip is that we in America, me, I live in America, we live in the land of opportunity, as it's said. And I think we don't think about that enough or maybe we don't appreciate it enough. I drove miles and miles out and would see, you know, little kids next to their moms with a baby on their back just digging and thinking maybe that that young little girl who is probably eight years old is just gonna be digging next to her mom until she's a mom. And you know, I don't know every story, but I could only imagine that there is not as much opportunity, if any opportunity where I went, like we have here. And so I'm still processing all of that and thinking, what are we doing with that opportunity that we've been given? And how can we help others who don't have that opportunity? Not even at the zoo. <laughs> then we got to spend a day at Kruger National Park to see some wild animals, and it was amazing. No, I don't see it. It's in between those trees. You see a monkey? Oh, it is a monkey. I thought you were joking. Hello. <laughs> Okay, we're on top of this mountain in the middle of 
Wild Africa Kruger National Park. We've already seen an elephant, some hippos, probably an alligator. No, a crocodile. We just saw some war hogs and big giraffes. I got good photos of the giraffe. And uh, it's like 360 views. It's amazing. But one of the coolest things was just being able to go to a worship service, an African worship service in Mozambique where I went. They speak Portuguese, but they also sang in their like original dialect and they had Portuguese subtitles and I was trying to worship in a third language. It was, it was really great. Listen to this. <laughs> Wow, I just got chills listening to that again. That was amazing. Africa was amazing. I learned a lot. I'm still processing a lot, but I'm glad I went. Then we flew home, and then I had an event at my church where I taught my church the importance and the biblical foundations for why we sing, which was really awesome. And then the next morning, me and my wife flew out to Nashville to go to the SALT conference, which thinking about Africa and the SALT conference are two totally different extremes of the Christian world. Homeland, I hear country music playing. <laughs> I don't even listen to country music. What's up, Salt community? We are at Salt 2023 right now. I'm with Jimmy Cooper, founder of Hey Worship Leader. All right, so this is where I'm gonna be spending like the next four hours when I start in an hour. But this is it. This is my little unit right here, my little computer hooked up to the screen. I even have a whiteboard. I have a whiteboard. Check this out. What is going on here? It, this is nuts. <laughs> this is nuts. I'm Josh. Josh, I'm Jimmy. Nice hey, to good you. to meet you. So what is it for real? Well, so eat, eat, yeah, eat nice. to eyes our company. And uh, so we're just, we do audio video lighting uh, designed for ministry. So we are, right. we have Candyland, which is okay. right. Uh, uh, Toys, lighting gear, video gear, it's, you know, oh, it's see. it's it's candy for tech people, right? Yep. So you can walk on the LED video floor. It's cool you that you can, can walk on it. Heck yeah. Is there a protective layer or something? There is, there's a thin, there's a, there's a, a like a plexi lens on top of it. So yeah, yeah. you can walk on it. We hope people will grab the game board pieces and move them around. And actually do it, yeah, yeah. I just met Dalton. How's it going? Good, good. I wanted to ask you, what's been your favorite thing so far? Um, so this is our first year here, um, and it's been so encouraging, so awesome. Uh, this is actually the first time I've actually been to a worship conference, so the fact that there are other people that are going through the same thing, um, running into the same challenges, just feeling that camaraderie of seeing all those people and, and hitting those same challenges and just being encouraged by all this has been so great. It's been super beneficial, very encouraged. Um, God is doing great things here. That's awesome, man. Very cool. Do you use String Joy? Yes. Awesome. I need to get some. I need to get some. Maybe they'll sponsor some. Now you got it. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, How's God. The cotton candy. So good. Vanilla cupcake is where it's at. Yes. All yes. right. What Double flavor did you right. get? I got bubblegum. You're all right. Bubble gum. Gum. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Just ran into my friends at Hollyland. This is. Haley. Haley and Michael and Michael and so we're just gonna hear some of what they have to offer and you are hearing one of their products called the Lark Max is that right yes sir yes sir so tell us a little bit about Hollyland yeah so uh, my name is Michael I'm the branding and communication specialist here at Hollyland and we brought some of the products out here today it's a salt conference so this is gonna be our Solcom C1 Pro so this is gonna be our fully uh, fully wireless intercom system 
This is going to give you about 1,100 feet of range. It's going to be fully operational with it, without the hub. We also have a hub system if you'd like to purchase that as well. Um, each of these systems comes with a replaceable battery as well as a charging dock as well. Um, this is our first uh, intercom system that comes with environmental noise cancellation. So on the microphone, if you want to take a look here, you can, when it flips to blue, so you pull it down and it's blue, this is going to be the environmental noise cancellation. And when you turn it to green, that means that it's going to be fully operational um, without the environmental noise cancellation. Pull down the talk, push up the mute. Perfect. So if they want to reach out to you, how do they connect? Yeah, so you can go to our website. It's store.holland.com. Very cool. Yeah. All right, man. Have a good nice one. Nice to meet you. Yeah. All right, so the next part of the video, I went around to a bunch of different vendors and just told them to give me like their 30 second spiel. Some of them went a little bit longer and some of them I try to cut up a little bit. But if you don't want to watch this, I'll put try to put timestamps down below. But if you're interested to hear some of the latest tech from some of these vendors, uh, watch this. All right, I'm here with, what's your name? James. And you, oh, that's right, we share the same name. That's right. And you're with Hala, 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 Hala. Hala. Very cool. Now I just got the uh, experience here, but can right. you tell us what I just experienced? What we're able to do with uh, the matrix array is create beams of discrete sound. And what you've heard is three different sections, one general coverage beam where you're getting the cello, and then we were able to take the tracks, the individual tracks, and then put them into parametric beams and focus them through different spots and you're able to walk through and hear them discreetly without hearing the others in the same space. All coming from one source. Yeah, the MD96 has uh, 96 drivers, has 80 uh, 1.4 inch uh, soft dome tweeters and five, um, five inch, 16 5 inch uh, woofers. All individually uh, powered and individually processed. So what's cool about what you're about to hear is that there are three main instruments coming out of this main speaker, but they're all pointed at specific areas and they're notated on the carpet. And uh, every time I go to that spot, you can hear only that instrument, even though all three are playing, because it doesn't matter what time you go to those three areas, there, you will only ever hear that main instrument. It's pretty cool, check it out. most applicable context for this very cool technology. You can do a lot of really neat things like, you know, separate languages discreetly. Um, and the beams allow you to do lots of really neat things. But the one thing that it can do that nothing else can do is provide you control, absolute control in both, uh, in all dimensions. You can uh, shape left, shape right, shape up, down, and then in the, um, in the far field as well. Very cool, man. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Awesome. All right, so I have John here with Mankin. Tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, so Mankin Media Systems is an uh, audiovisual lighting and managed services integrator. Um, we've been around for almost 23 years and we love serving the local church. So we're here with some of our friends from Yamaha and ETC just showing some of the newest, latest, and greatest. Right. Um, but we would love to um, just talk about some of our services as well. So yeah. not only great consoles, but we really feel like churches in particular, um, they really are looking for a river guide, uh, somebody who's gonna come alongside them and not only just help them with a really elegant and savvy solution for some technical systems, but also somebody who's gonna be there for the long haul, helping them navigate these treacherous waters of technology, um, helping them avoid that whirlpool of, oh man, why did I make that decision? Or um, from an executive level, hey, I want something that's gonna land um, and last for a really long time. So how do I develop that solution in a multi-phased approach? It, it's really a system that enables you as a staff or a volunteer to essentially be an engine of discipleship. Um, you, the church needs you to be taking volunteers out and um, asking them how their walk with Jesus is going, not on a ladder trying to figure out why a projector isn't working, <laughs> am I right? Or That's running down in the middle of service for um, to the children's ministry to try to figure out why ProPresenter isn't going on the screen. Give that to us. Um, we can do all that remotely. We can see what you see, hear what you hear. And that's just in a subscription-based service, meaning you're not gonna get additional charges during the month. Um, so you can plan out for operating expenditures 
um, and be able to hand all of that stuff to us and become an engine of discipleship. So if you're interested, go to mancommedia.com. We'd love to talk with you, um, start that conversation, and uh, really just uh, learn about you as well. That's awesome, man. Hey, Very thank cool. you so much. Yep. You want to tell the world what you do? What is glue? Do you know what glue does? <laughs> so this is church.tech. And what this is, is pastors are able to put in their sermons and it creates discussion questions for small group leaders to use during the week. It creates video clips um, for you to post on your social media. And it's a really cool way to, within minutes, save you time in front of the computer so that you can be out in front with your current congregation. And it's it's awesome. That's very cool. So it actually comes up with questions yeah. based on reading the sermon, yeah. like it knows. It's it AI. Is, yeah. It transcripts the whole sermon, okay. creates a list of discussion questions. If you don't like them, you can regenerate them, and it'll show you new, brand new questions. And it gives social media stuff? Yes. Wow. Yep video clips and then the cool part scroll down is it'll give you a score as to how it the public will view it and then it gives you a description as to why it chose that specific part that is very cool are y'all running any like specials for the conference or anything we are so it's a one month free trial okay you try one month you get one month for free yeah and you get to try see if you like it very cool thank you would they Still wanted- That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. No, this is this is Glue. So yeah. Glue is a platform for churches to use. We help connect churches to people. So okay. We have free unlimited texting. Gotcha. Uh, so you hop on. We give you a phone number. You're able to text your current congregation. Uh, oh. Okay. We have a lot of different resources. That's what this Discover is. So a lot of thousands of different resources for you guys to hop on and wow. just find like sermon series, different things like that. And then we also have this awesome thing. It's called Reach. It's okay. our way of connecting people in the world to your church. So they're out in your community. Uh, we have partners like He Gets Us, the He Gets Us campaign. People are interested in that campaign. They show interest online and we connect them right to your church. Don't drop it. <laughs> no, I'm not scared to hold it after he just told me the price. How's that? How much is it? $17,000. That's it? 17000 Well, my name's Dan. Tell me yeah. what Easy Worship is all about. Easy Worship is a church presentation software that allows you to display all your media content on the screen. Uh, it's easy to use, uh, inexpensive for a church, um, great for volunteers to use to present your songs, scriptures, media presentations. Uh, all of that. It's, yeah, it's cool. awesome software to use. All right, so what sets you apart from other companies that do similar things? Uh, it's in the name. It's easy. Mm. It's easy to use. Um, we're a subscription-based software, so there's no intro uh, upfront cost. It's just a monthly or annual subscription. You're good to go. Site license, use it on as many computers as you need for your church. Uh, lots of great features as well. Awesome. Where can we find you? Easyworship.com. That's it. Or we're any... in Tulsa, Oklahoma, if you want to come visit us. <laughs> Just come knock on the door. <laughs> uh, do you have any specials going on right now or anything? Uh, for the conference, we have 25% off the first year. Gotcha. Very yep. cool. All right, man. Yeah. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, no problem. So you're DC, and I actually know nothing about what you do, so this is perfect. Who are y'all? What do you do? Uh, DC Pro is a full-service production and integration company, okay. providing sales, design, um, integration, rentals, and uh, full service production. It says Thor over there. Is this a certain, tell us about it. Yeah, this is, this is a Thor LED wall. Uh, okay. This is the Ridge 2.5 pixel pitch. Um, this wall specifically is a 16.9 uh, aspect ratio build where most video walls are 500 by 500 millimeter or 500 by 1000 millimeter. And basically what that means is it's natively a 16.9 ratio. So if you do a five by five wall, it's gonna be a 16.9 ratio, five wide by five. Gotcha. Five high. Thor makes amazing products. Um, they are newer in the market. Okay. Um, I don't exactly know when they came to the market, but they've become kind of our one of our favorite go-to products for providing churches with an LED wall solution. Gotcha. Um, they're great to work with. Their customer support is amazing. Uh, they're church guys. They understand everything that you know everyone's going through and right. budgets and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're in the United States. They're in the United they're States. In the United States. <laughs> so they're a fantastic. Thor is in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I need a big hammer. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about Subsplash. Yes, yeah. Subsplash. So I'm John with Subsplash. 
and we have been around in our current form serving churches and ministries since 2009. Wow. We are the we hold the distinction of being the first company to help a church put its own branded app in the App Store. So that was in late 2009. So the App Store is about a year old, and now we're serving about 18,000 churches and ministries. Wow. So not only mobile apps, but TV, Apple TV and Roku. We also enable your church to essentially create their own website on our, our platform, live stream and host your on-demand media, sermons, but also small group content, that sort of thing. And then on top of that, also allow your groups to communicate with each other, your leaders to communicate with your groups, and even manage people, volunteers, family and household relationships, check in, all that fun stuff. It's gonna add something to this. You could definitely. definitely. Okay, so really, the point of the whole thing that we're trying to build is how many hours per week does normal churches get their congregation members? How many? Uh, like two, maybe, right? Two. Yeah. And as the normal stats state, state, people spend seven hours a day on their on their cell phones. So the age of distraction is real. Yes. And our hypothesis is that the Facebook, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the Target, yep. for my mom, for, for, my, for my wife, like Nordstrom, <laughs> Amazon, right? Amazon, yep. They are discipling our people better than we are as a big C church. Mm. So can we use technology to actually cut through the noise and actually not just increase a church's outreach to, to go extend their flock, but to also deepen that discipleship journey as well too through oh, yeah. technology so that's what we do that's awesome very cool yeah yeah so this you are the head you're the president of salt <laughs> and that's right and this is the main microphone that we can afford this is the this is all we can do right here this is what your sponsor dollar I also had the opportunity to meet the Worship Probs folks and get to go to one of their breakouts where they recorded a live podcast, and they, they're they really awesome people. So I think my biggest takeaway from both of these trips is that we as worship leaders need to lead worship like a missionary. Well, officially, as I think about it, I think about what do we need to do or not do to make sure that the gospel is heard. Our jobs as worship leaders is to use music to help the church sing, to point people to Jesus so they can respond in worship to him. And so whether you are in Africa or you are in Nashville, Tennessee at the biggest tech conference ever, you still have to answer and wrestle with these questions. What do I need to do to ensure that my people can sing, that they can worship their creator in a gathered assembly as we come together without any distractions? Like all of this new gear, the fancy gadgets and tools, it can either serve what we're trying to accomplish or it can get in the way. And in my experience, it really just depends on the leader. And so I liked the heart of a lot of these people. They really wanted to serve the local church. They wanted to allow technology to free us up so we can do the work of ministry. I love the heart behind that, but each leader needs to answer this question uh, for themselves in their own context. You never want to fall into the trap, especially going to these fancy conferences, fall in the trap of having to have something just because another ministry does. That, that never makes anything better. Like when I'm thinking about my trip back to Africa, they didn't have a lot of tech. They had some though. They used the tech that they had to serve the need that they had. They used PA system. They plugged their guitar in so people could hear it. And so no matter where you are in your context, do the best you can do. Think pastorally. Think with what I'm dreaming about, what I really want, what I'm budgeting for, what I'm saving up for. Is this to make myself feel better, to feel cool, or does it actually serve the main purpose of why we're gathered in the first place. So I mentioned we need to lead worship like a missionary. And what I mean by that is in order for the gospel to be heard, we might have to give up some things. You know, I think about there were times where I walked into a place and taking your shoes off was expected. And that's not the way it is at my house. And so, you know, I would want to take my shoes off to make sure that they could hear the gospel to minister to them. I can't come into a place and say, well, in my freedom in Christ, I'm going to leave my shoes on because there's nothing wrong with it. Sure, you can do that, but the gospel then would not be heard very clearly through your freedom. And so the same kind of thing goes for us. What are we doing that might be getting in the way? What are you doing that might be getting in the way of the ultimate goal? If you want help with this, I just completed my worship ministry blueprint course. It takes you through 
everything you should be doing as a worship leader. We start off at the top of what needs to happen this Sunday to get you ready. And then we go into how to build and maintain a thriving worship ministry. And there's even videos in there that you can share with your team as workshops. If you want to check that out, the worship ministry blueprint, I will link that down below. Thank you guys for following the channel, for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.